Greetings to you, Sir Richard Dalton, former UK ambassador to Iran, and thanks for taking the time for this interview, sir. Good afternoon, and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. Uh, Sir Richard, as you know, uh, the British Embassy was reopened almost four years after it was ransacked by a group of angry Iranians. It was reopened by Foreign Secretary Hammond on his uh, two-day trip to Iran. Uh, I would like to hear your thoughts on this, and do you think it was about time for the Embassy to be reopened? I was delighted to see it reopened. Diplomatic contacts between Britain and Iran have been conducted only in places like Geneva and New York and Vienna over the last few years, uh, and there have been far too few of them. There haven't been ministerial visits in either direction, and of course, without functioning embassies, it is not possible to provide services to Iranians and to British people who want to interact uh, with the other country. So it gave me great pleasure uh, to see the British Embassy being reopened, and I hope it will be rapidly Uh, restaffed. Uh, I sent a message of congratulations to the Iranian Charge in London uh, and I I look forward to increasing cooperation. Of course the nuclear agreement is the key for the next stage. It needs to be implemented faithfully by uh, both sides Uh, but I'm confident that that will happen and that we can, uh, between all those who wish the official relationship well, and of course the efforts of governments on both sides, we can rebuild a a more friendly and more cooperative relationship. Sir Richard, when we saw the pictures of the uh, reopened embassy, there was uh, one picture that still showed graffiti on the wall, right above the Queen's picture. Why do you think that they had left this one uh, uh, intact? Well, I don't think they've quite finished the redecorating. Uh, It's also worth uh, reminding ourselves that these slogans are still used and are a very negative influence in developing relations between uh, my country and and Iran. Some of the language that is still used by senior uh, spokespeople of the Islamic Republic uh, is very hostile. Uh, There is a high level of distrust of Britain for a mixture of historic and contemporary reasons. And as Mr. Hammond made clear eloquently, uh, rather than uh, try and pretend that these difficulties don't exist, uh, both countries need to find ways to overcome them, to work around them, to show by goodwill and mutual respect uh, that it is possible to find a a better way for the future. Yeah, Uh, there was this issue of compensation that British... uh government always asks for compensation for the repair of the embassy, but it seems like that the Brits have accepted uh, to do the, to foot the bill themselves. Why is that? Uh, I'm not clear that that's the case. You may have better information than than I do. I would have expected the the British to continue to to, to press for some form of compensation, as is standard in international diplomatic practice. Before the reopening of the embassy, uh, London asked for two conditions. One was that the uh, Iranian government accept about 4,000 would-be refugees whose uh, applications have been denied by the Home Office, and uh, Iran rejected this uh, condition. Also, there was this other condition that the British government asked for to uh, install some uh, high... uh, Uh, high technology, you know, uh, state-of-the-art technology um, communication equipment in the embassy and the Iranian wanted to see what kind of communication devices uh, Brits have brought into Iran. Do we know if these two conditions were met by the by the Iranian side? Well, well, the second one wasn't a condition of the British side, it was uh, an obstacle placed in the way of a normal diplomatic practice, namely allowing Uh, diplomatic freight under diplomatic seal to into a receiving country in order to support the work of uh, the chargé d'affaires and uh, his staff. And we find that the Iranians objected uh, and insisted on inspection, which, of course, they have no right to do. So, yes, there was a precondition on the British side 
uh, to do with Iran changing its policy on taking back the, its citizens who have no right to stay in the United Kingdom. Uh, and uh, the formulae that were found to overcome the Iranian problem and the British problem have uh, remained confidential. So I don't know uh, whether they simply agreed to address these questions after the embassies had been reopened, uh, or whether there were substantive changes of position uh, that allowed uh, both sides to, to climb down. It's not clear to me exactly how it was done. Uh, uh, Sir Richard, Mr. Hammond said that Britain is right to work towards good relations with Iran, but should tread carefully. Why is that? Why should uh, British government be so careful with Iran? Hasn't Iran accepted this international agreement? And do you think Iran is, uh, can be rightfully take its place in the civilized world community? Well, I think Mr. Hammond was, ec was echoing in a rather mild way the language used consistently by the uh, Iranian leadership, particularly the senior clerical leadership. Uh, many of whom don't disguise uh, their very strong feelings against Britain. Uh, and they use much more colorful, uh, much more hurtful language, indeed, from time to time. Uh, it's inevitable when two countries have clear disagreements, whether it's on human rights matters or on the future of Israel and Palestine uh, or on the future of the government of President Assad in Syria, uh, where they find it difficult to establish cooperation in, in counter-terrorism, uh, where it's vitally important that both parties implement scrupulously the nuclear agreement, to suggest that uh, Britain needs to tread carefully, I think, is, 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 is standard uh, language. It doesn't represent anything other than a, than a reflection of the fact that it has always been difficult to work with Iran, uh, and uh, in order to work successfully, you need to work carefully. Uh, when he met uh, Mr. Rouhani, the Iranian president said, the historical judgments of a nation cannot be changed in a short uh, period of time, but uh, should not be, uh, but uh, one should not uh, be uh, uh, stuck in the historical past. Uh, was he, uh, what do you think he was referring to? Is, is he referring to the uh, time when Britain was uh, involved heavily in Iranian political affairs, or is he uh, talking about the uh, less distant past, uh, the Iranian revolution and the sort? I think he's talking about both, but he is making a, a delicate illusion uh, rather than a crude and vicious allusion to the past, such as is often made by other uh, leading Iranians and representatives of the conservative press in Iran uh, in particular. Uh, of course, Iranian official language is full of talk about enemies, uh, about the hand of enemies being raised against Iran uh, socially, economically, politically, morally, from a religious angle. Uh, and uh, this vocabulary is, is plain to see. There is less of it than there was under the previous uh, regime of President Ahmadinejad, and, and, and that is very welcome. Uh, but certainly it was something that I had to confront uh, from 2002 to 2006 as, as a British ambassador, uh, and uh, it is something which Iranian officials often uh, remind a British representative about when that British representative uh, goes to see them. So it's a reference not just to the history of the 20th century, but also to the history of Britain in the Middle East in the 21st century, uh, and the sense that uh, Britain imposed sanctions on Iran in connection with the nuclear question, and that uh, it will take time uh, for from the Iranian perspective, the memory of these actions to fade. And of course, there are many similar sentiments uh, on the British side, where uh, the fact that uh, Iran was so difficult to negotiate with for so many years before 2013 
the suspicions and doubts uh, that that period gave rise to need to be forgotten and put on one side. Yeah. Similarly, the continuing uh, Iranian support for those who are working in the context of Israel and Palestine against a negotiated settlement, uh, that too is uh, a, a difficulty in, in the way of uh, improved understanding. So not only improved language, but also improved actions are needed from both sides. Uh, as you know, the Iranian uh, public, they still think, a good uh, number of them still think that Britain is behind the Iranian politics and all these mullahs were <laughs> sort of made in England. And at, at the same time, the Iranian government is suspicious of the British intention and they think Britain is hatching plots against the Islamic Republic trying to overthrow it. Do you think this distrust on both sides, on the government side and the people side, can be overcome over time? Well, well, of course it can. I mean, I have to say, and I respect and admire and have many friendships in Iran, that this kind of thinking is totally immature. Uh, Iran has been in charge of its own destiny for decades. Uh, it has been in a position to determine how it is ruled internally. Uh, it has, has autonomous relations with other countries in its region and, and more widely. It is in control of its own political language and, and, and ideology. Uh, and uh, uh, <clears throat> it is not the case either that foreigners have brought about the present state of affairs uh, in Iran or are consistently against Iran and plotting against it every hour of the day and night. I mean, we found it quite ludicrous sometimes the degree to which uh, the importance of foreigners in the current situation of the Islamic Republic was exaggerated in, in some quarters. And it is done so partly to deflect blame when things go wrong. This is understandable, but it is also immature. And uh, I'm confident that under a government which reflects the very best of Iranian traditions, past and present, uh, that these, this kind of language can evolve and this kind of mental habit uh, can be overcome. I'm confident, too, that we are entering an era of better experiences, both by foreigners of Iran uh, and by Iran of foreigners. Uh, could the Iranian public uh, expect to get their visas in Tehran, or, or do they still have to go to uh, neighboring countries uh, to UAE or Turkey for getting their visas? Uh, for now, they have to continue with the current practice. Uh, I'm not aware of plans for the future. Uh, my hopes are that we would be able, Britain would be able once more to issue visas in Tehran as it always did. But that is a major administrative exercise to re-employ staff, to train staff, to set up the agency that is required to examine visa applications and refer them for decision where necessary. Uh, so I do think that will take time uh, and that uh, that is one of the areas where Britain is going to tread uh, carefully. But such is the demand both for travel to Britain and for travel to Iran uh, from both ends that I am sure uh, any ambassador or charge d'affaires uh, will wish to develop a full visa service as soon as possible. When can uh, we expect uh, the relationship to be uh, upgraded to ambassadorial level, Sir Richard? I don't know. All I've seen is what is in the press, that there is an agreement to do so, but no agreement on the timing. Uh, Mr. Hammond talked about a new phase in relation with Iran, especially over Syria. However, he didn't have much time to discuss the details of, uh, you know, a Syrian uh, resolution of the Syrian matter. How do you think this thing will evolve, this political process, now that Iranians are getting involved in discussion with the other, you know, countries like U.S., U.K., France, and now Russia is also getting involved? Well, well, it is, it is uncertain, but to start with, I welcome wholeheartedly this change of tone by the British government. Uh, it was absurd in previous years 
to go along with the refusal to include Iran as a full member of the group of nations trying to achieve peace. Uh, it was wrong from every respect. It was a betrayal of the Syrian people, uh, above all, as well as a short-sighted failure to recognize the fact that Iran has a defense treaty, a formal treaty with the Syrian government, uh, and for reasons of national interest, uh, is going to be involved uh, with the countries to its west in the same way that Saudi Arabia and other countries are involved in countries to their north uh, where their security and national interests are concerned. So the fact that Mr. Hammond uh, effected this change in British policy is extremely welcome. But the difficulty is finding the formula for bringing countries to a peace table. And no such formula yet exists. Uh, all sides in Syria appear to think that war is the best option they have for advancing their national cause. So the four or five warring parties in Syria uh, look to me to be some distance away from agreeing to proposals, whether they come from Russia or Iran or wherever. Uh, but certainly diplomatic efforts to find those formulae and get all countries aligned behind uh, obliging the warring parties in Syria to come to talks by cutting off military supplies to them uh, as a way of putting pressure on them to end their destructive competition. Uh, that must be the way forward. Yeah. Uh, one other thing, Mr. Uh, Dalton. Uh, Mr. Hammond uh, talked about the Iranian community when he saw Iran for the first time. Uh, he said he didn't expect it to be like this. He found it a very, you know, progressive uh, society. People not uh, necessarily uh, taking every order from the government. He mentioned the traffic uh, going through. Uh, sometimes the police had to ask people, the motorists, to move away, and they were a little bit resistant to this. So well, how do you think this... Uh, perception of the foreign secretary once he comes back, uh, of course he's come back to London now, how it could change the policy, the UK policy towards Iran? Personal perceptions of ministers, however naive some of their remarks might be, uh, are important. Uh, and I'm very glad that Mr. Hammond has made the visit. Uh, he is the first British foreign minister to have gone to Iran since 2003. Uh, so there is far too little knowledge of Iran in the highest levels of the British government. Uh, people who advise them have been telling them the reality of Iranian life and politics uh, for years, but there's no alternative in the mind of a minister, whether Iranian or British, to have those uh, formal uh, uh, items of advice and instruction from officials confirmed by personal experience. So uh, I hope that uh, this is the first in a series of encounters which will show both British and Iranian leaders that uh, their stereotypes about the other country, uh, which they have been stuck with for too long because of the nuclear Iraqi and Syrian confrontations, that those stereotypes uh, are unsophisticated and must be replaced with a fuller understanding of the complex reality of each other's country. Yes. And uh, one last question. Do you think the Iranian president would pay a visit to, to Britain uh, since he's going to France in November? Would an invitation be in order by uh, Prime Minister Cameron? Uh, it certainly would be in order. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me, though, if President Rouhani was to say, if he were to receive such an invitation, thank you, uh, but uh, I shall uh, make a suggestion to you as to when my calendar uh, might allow it uh, in uh, several months' time or even well on into 2016. I think British relations 
are sensitive in, in Iran and that the Iranian government intends to tread carefully, to use a phrase you reminded me about yeah. earlier. Uh, after all, they see potential benefit in discussing regional issues with a permanent member of the Security Council. Uh, they can see that British commercial concerns are potential commercial partners that can bring advantage to the Iranian economy and the Iranian people. Uh, but in order to harvest such uh, advantages, uh, they need to avoid antagonizing those sections of their own uh, opinion uh, inside Iran uh, that don't want to see uh, relations with Britain uh, flourish. So uh, I'm convinced that there will eventually be a presidential visit uh, by Iran to London, but I'm not holding my breath. I think it may take some time. Any other thoughts you want to add to our uh, talk, uh, Sir Richard? Not at the moment, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time, sir. Have a nice day. Thank, thank, thank you. Bye-bye.